During my years of functional medicine, one of the things I haven't talked a lot about is the big bad wolf cancer, capital C cancer. It is the thing that everyone fears. And as I've learned through functional medicine, the majority of the population doesn't even understand cancer. Most people live in fear thinking that any moment they're gonna get the, the drop of the ax and the cancer, capital C word is gonna get them and they don't know why. You probably have a loved one or at least a relative or at least a friend that has experienced cancer, gone through chemo, radiation, surgery, something in the cancer world. This video is designed to help you understand a little bit more about cancer and understand that you have more in control than you realize. Cancer is not the big bad wolf that comes out of nowhere. There are triggers. There is a reason cancer is exponentially rising in America and across the world, and you're about to find out why. I'm gonna go through my cancer diagram in a nutshell. This is cancer treatment in a nutshell. I will do more videos on the specifics of cancer and ways to prevent it, ways to treat it, but this is gonna be in a nutshell for anyone with cancer, anyone scared of cancer, anyone who knows someone with cancer. So let's dive into the diagram. First, I would like to talk about the triggers associated with cancer. So you may not realize this, but a mammogram is not the reason you got cancer. A colonoscopy is not the reason you got cancer. You had triggers before that cancer ever developed. So if you don't have cancer, and I hope you don't, if you don't have cancer, you need to take care of these triggers because these triggers are ultimately what's going to cause the cancer. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to use my hand as a metaphor and the palm being the gut and the fingers being the toxic burden. And that's what this first section is showing. This first section is showing that the gut issues, any gut issues that you have can trigger cancer. You can have bacterial overgrowth and yeast overgrowth, inflammation in your bowels, you can have poor diet, inflammatory foods. All of those things are leading to triggering cancer. Anything that causes inflammation causes cancer. Now, the other bigger causes of cancer are actually the toxic burden, the next four categories. And if I were to highlight, I would definitely say the main two were going to be those two. So let's go through each of those triggers briefly. Biological toxins. The biological toxins, those are things like I just mentioned in the gut, yeast overgrowth or bacterial overgrowth in your bowels. People forget, and it's not really talked about in traditional medicine, that these bacteria and yeast and, and fungi, they make toxins. They literally are trying to survive and their toxins inhibit you. Your, their toxins inflame you. They're trying to survive and so are you. So if they're overgrowing, they create biological toxins. Number two is mold toxins. So indoor mold is very common nowadays. The, the estimated statistic is 50% of, of buildings have water damage in it, may not have toxic mold, but have water damage. So any mold exposure is a common trigger of cancer. And contrary to popular belief, mold has no smell. So you might be living in mold and don't even know it. So if you have a loved one or someone that was recently diagnosed with cancer, you need to look for mold in the home. Number two is environmental, or number three, sorry, is environmental chemicals. Environmental chemicals are probably the plague and the bane of existence as to why cancer has grown so rapidly in America. The invention of urban or herbicides, pesticides, all the chemicals, plastics, uh, all the things that we've introduced, the hundreds and thousands of chemicals that we have created and introduced into our food supply and our cosmetics and our air and all kinds of things. These things get into our DNA, they get into our cells and they cause cancer. It's, it's a well-known fact, look it up. The last but not least is heavy metals. Now, heavy metals are not really man-made. Environmental chemicals are always considered man-made. Heavy metals aren't man-made necessarily. They were made by God. They're in the planet. They're in the earth. They're everywhere. But the, the deal is that in the Paleolithic times, when we lived in caves and hunted our own food, we weren't mining up lithium for batteries and, and mercury for dental fillings. So with modern man, with industrialization, we've mined the earth and brought these metals up and concentrated them. And we've exposed the American people, the world, to these heavy metals. Constant heavy metal exposure causes cancer by displacing our actual metals like magnesium and iron and selenium. All those are beneficial metals, but when you have too many heavy metals, they displace those beneficial metals and then your proteins and your biochemistry goes awry and that's how you end up with cancer. Last but not least is of course emotional toxins. Anyone that's gotten cancer will usually tell you that they had some stressful time going on before that or their whole life, whether it be um, trauma in their earlier life or trauma recently, something going on. So all of those are the triggers to cancer, but then once you have cancer, the treatment somewhat changes. Yes, you still need to treat the root causes, those triggers, but you also need to get very aggressive at attacking the cancer. So now let's move down a section and start talking about once you have cancer or whoever you know has cancer, what do you do? 
the next steps once someone has cancer is to focus on inhibiting the growth of the cancer. This is how I break it down. I focus on inhibiting the growth of the cancer as well as stimulating the cell death. Too often in conventional medicine, and basically 100% of the time in conventional medicine, all they're focused on is killing the cancer. But the problem with killing the cancer is that you're also killing the human because the cancer is mostly human that's converted to this dangerous cell that's taking over the body. So it's almost impossible to attack the cancer without attacking the human. So how do we stimulate the cell death in natural ways where human cells can survive and the cancer cells die? That's where we get into more of the functional medicine stuff, as well as inhibiting the growth. So yes, chemo can kill, but inhibit it can't really inhibit the growth. It just causes death. So let's first talk about some of the things that inhibit growth. So here are the, the things that cause or you can do to inhibit growth. So inflammation is, as we already talked about, a common cause of cancer. And so by reducing inflammation, you can reduce the, the growth of cancer. Sugar feeds cancer. Cancer feeds sugar. If you don't know much about that, you need to go look it up. Number three is mental stress. We talked about emotional stress and, and emotional trauma. Uh, those are all stressors and stressors feed cancer. It's the multiplier. Oxidative damage, that's a, a fancy way of saying if you have too much, um, I, I like to compare it to if your car is running at 7,000 RPMs, if you're redlining the car, there's gonna be lots of exhaust coming out of the back. That exhaust is oxidative damage to the, the engine. It can't handle that for too long. So if your body is constantly running on overdrive, then it's running past its ability to antioxidant. We know antioxidants are good. Antioxidants prevent oxidative stress. If there's too much oxidative stress or not enough antioxidants, it contributes to cancer. And then of course, hormone imbalance. So breast cancers and, and sexual cancers, whether it be uterine or, or, um, or male prostate, can be based on hormone imbalances, either too high or too low. So fixing those hormone imbalances uh, reverses cancer as well as prevents cancer. Genetics play a key role. Now, I think too many people focus on genetics, but that is a portion of your story. You might have gotten breast cancer because breast cancer runs in the family. That's your weakness to develop breast cancer, but the triggers are what caused it. So we need to focus on whatever genes those are, and we need to make sure we're facilitating those. On the opposite side of the spectrum, as far as stimulating cell death, the number one thing you need to activate in order to reverse your cancer or give your body the best fighting chance is your immune system. Your immune system has the tools to identify and completely eradicate cancer. The trick is, can you activate it in time in order to fight off the cancer and get into remission? Next thing you can do to stimulate cell death is starve the cell. Now, this is tricky because your human cells need energy too, but cancer cells never turn off, so they're easier to starve, and we'll get into the specifics. Next is, of course, metabolic stress. How can you metabolically stress the cancer cell without stressing the human cell too much or stressing the cancer cell where the human cell can still survive? And then last but not least is the cellular toxicity, the, the killing of the cell, trying to make it as toxic as possible. So let's go into some of the specifics without getting into and lost into too much detail. We'll focus on the inhibiting growth first. So the inflammation, here are the things I've written down that you can easily tackle to help anti-inflame. Curcumin, which is an anti-inflammatory supplement, fish oil, CBD oil, cryotherapy, cold therapy, cold plunges, those can cause anti-inflammation. And of course, paleo diet, re uh, removing inflammatory foods causes anti-inflammation. Adding anti-inflammatory foods also contributes. Next is, of course, getting rid of sugar so that you don't have any feeding of the cancer. You want to remove sugar so you stress it and prevent it from growing by, by limiting the sugar. Your liver will still make sugar, but you want those sugar levels as low as possible. You don't want to eat any by going on the keto diet. So if you combine these two, and this you, you may want to work with a nutritionist to do a keto-style paleo diet, which can be difficult, but very maintainable, and you can make it delicious. Next is the mental stress. Of course, you can't forget about you got to tackle the therapist if, if you're emotionally overwhelmed even before cancer, the cancer diagnosis just makes it that much harder. So make sure you're talking to someone, whether that be a spiritual advisor, a pastor, um, a therapist, a licensed therapist, find someone to help you through this situation. Of course, using adrenal support like supplements um, and making sure you're getting adequate sleep to reduce those stress. Next is, of course, the antioxidants and detoxification. If you have too much oxidative damage, you need to add in more antioxidants. You need to detox. As we talked about earlier, toxic burden, way up here above the cancer, is part of the reason you developed cancer. So if you can detoxify, you can potentially help your body reverse that cancer. Coffee enemas, although it sounds kind of gross, is a 
a uh, common way to reverse uh, toxins and, and detoxify, and it helps get the, the trash out, if you know what I mean. Uh, hormone detox, this is a little more lengthy discussion, but the idea is your estrogen, your testosterone, those get broken down into other metabolites, and if those metabolites are not being adequately processed outside of the body, they can actually become inflammatory and cause hormone uh, cancers and inflame your, your other non-hormone cancers like stress hormones cause um, worsening of all cancers. And then of course, if you have, if you want to investigate further with genetics, Intellix DNA is a very powerful genetic assessment on a very detailed genetic level. We won't go into detail. Most people know about genetics. Next step is of course to stimulate the cell death. These are all designed to be simultaneous. My general goal is to make sure you're attacking each category at once, whether it be 10, I don't want 10 things attacking one thing. I would rather 10 things each attacking a separate category. All of these categories need to be attacked and these are options that working with a physician, working with a functional medicine practitioner can help guide based on your lab work, based on your symptoms, which ones you need to attack the most. So in order to stimulate cell death, one of the things we heavily focus on in the functional medicine world is pushing that immune system, getting that immune system into overdrive to fight the cancer. It's no different than conventional medicine. Even traditional medicine nowadays is doing immunotherapy for cancer. The problem with immunotherapy on the conventional side is that they use drugs that really send the immune system into overdrive and can cause worsening of the cancer because it drives inflammation, it drives autoimmunity. So doing immune stimulation with uh, natural agents like mistletoe, hyperthermia, and, and IV high dose vitamin C can send the immune system into overdrive, but more into a controlled, uh, controlled way and um, allow attacking the cancer without it worsening your symptoms. But this needs to be done carefully because if the immune system is already out of control because of inflammation and all the other root cause issues we were talking about, then you're not ready for the immune stimulation. Sometimes we have to calm down that immune system before we can send it into overdrive towards the cancer. So mistletoe, yes, just like the kissing tree, makes a fruit that is a what we call a viscotoxin and is both toxic to the cancer cells as well as boosts the immune system. Uh, there's lots of studies showing reduced um, symptoms through chemotherapy and radiation, but there are case reports of sending people into remission and boosting the immune system. Hyperthermia is literally what it sounds like. It's not hypothermia where you're freezing, like cold plunge and, and, and cryotherapy. Hyperthermia is literally giving you a fever. The idea is raising the body temperature makes cancer cells divide even more rapidly and basically kills them off because they don't have enough energy supply because you're on keto and anti-inflammatory diet and they can't really survive, as well as hyperthermia and fevers is a massive stimulation to the immune system. So hyperthermia pushing you into a high temperature causes immune stimulation to hopefully identify the cancer as foreign. If you can teach your immune system that the cancer is foreign, then it can eradicate it for you. Uh, IV vitamin C and, and oral vitamin C is also used to, to treat and, and trigger the immune system. When we use IV vitamin C, we normally do high dose vitamin C. That both, both triggers the immune system as well as is directly toxic to cancer cells. More on my vitamin C infusion videos if you want to go watch that. Last, uh, definitely not last, is starving. So starving the cancer is a very powerful way to treat cancer, um, at least reduce the, the, the growth, slow the metastases, and that is fasting. Fasting is kind of a lost art in medicine. We don't really talk about it, and in the cancer world, we're actually very fearful that you're gonna lose weight and that you're, you're not gonna be able to sustain your biochemistry, especially if you're going through chemo. So fasting needs to be done very carefully with your physician supervision, uh, because done at the wrong time, you can actually burn up some of your own protein, burn up your immune system. So fasting is kind of a double-edged sword. It is powerful against cancer, but used in the wrong way is literally starving yourself, and that's not useful either. Anytime you fast, you have to make sure when you're breaking the fast and before the fast that you're really eating highly nutritious foods. I didn't say high calorie foods. I don't mean ice cream and Oreos. I mean high nutritious foods. Kales and cauliflowers and Brussels sprouts, all the colors, the reds and the yellows and the oranges, making sure you're getting all of those colors and high nutrients so that when you're fasting, your body has plenty of those nutrients on board. You can also do things to metabolically stress the cancer. Uh, I'm not gonna get into details of each of these, but poly-MVA, using nutrients to stress the, the cancer, like we just talked about, uh, colorful foods and supplements. Uh, lipid exchange is my way of calling it detoxification. Lipid exchange is the most powerful detox that, that we use. 
more on my other videos, not enough time in this video. And of course, light beds, uh, LED lights, and, and red lights can stimulate your energy metabolism. Anything that can stimulate your mitochondria that produce energy can boost the immune system, which will fight cancer for you. So metabolically stressing that cancer to, to um, give you a, a better fighting chance. And then of course, most people know about cellular toxicity. So this is where chemo comes in, this is where radiation comes in as far as traditional medicine. Uh, IPT is insulin potentiated therapy. They use low dose chemo and in combination with high doses of insulin in order to push your sugar down. You can do that in combination with things like amygdalin and B17, which is not as studied, but it's well known in the cancer world. And then of course, using things like hyperbaric. So hyperbaric oxygen therapy, where you get in the chamber and it's pressured, um, increasing the oxygen is actually a stressor of the body. I've got more videos on HBOT. Um, so look up HBOT and some of the benefits of hyperbarics and how that works with cancer, because there's more to it. I'm a big believer in using IV ozone, especially in cancer, mold, all the root cause triggers. Ozone is a very powerful trigger um, to, to fighting off really almost anything. I've got a whole video series on ozone, so if you want to learn more, go there. And then of course, we already talked about IV high dose vitamin C, but it's in both the immune system pro provocation and the direct cellular toxicity because high, high, high dose IV vitamin C actually makes the cancer cell toxic. After you've treated the, the cancer um, and, and the, the goal is to try to push yourself as we slide down this diagram, the goal is as you're tr inhibiting the growth and stimulating the cell death, you're trying to get yourself into remission, of course. Um, and the goal is once you're in remission, you don't just stop there. You have to keep going because something caused your cancer. So once you're in remission, you don't stop. You don't just throw a party and get and, and say, wow, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with that because those root cause issues might still be inside you. So after you're in remission, you'll see this purple arrow on my diagram that goes back to the triggers. You need to make sure you're working with a functional medicine practitioner that's looking at those triggers. Do I still have gut issues? Do I still have biological uh, mold, environmental chemicals, heavy metals, emotional toxins? What are all those things? Because if they're still present, you can absolutely get a secondary cancer, especially if you've done chemo or radiation. A common side effect of chemo and radiation is a secondary cancer, one completely different than the one you already have. Um, so if you did chemo radiation, make sure you're working on those root causes because chemo is toxic. It's intensely toxic. It's trying to kill the cancer before it kills you, but that stuff causes a lifelong damage that you need to make sure you're minimizing as many of the other triggers as possible because you don't get to take that back. Once you've done the chemo and radiation, that damage is there and you want to protect your system as much as possible. This is the final diagram with everything in it, which is a little overwhelming, which is why I break it down. So hopefully this very long uh, video it helps gives you a little idea no matter where you're at in your cancer um, course if you have cancer you know what now to do to make sure you're focusing on all these aspects if you don't have cancer want to prevent cancer focus on those root cause triggers uh, ahead if you have a loved one with cancer then help bring them healthy foods help coach them into the the healthy lifestyle no matter if they're doing chemo and radiation anything you can do to give your body more of a fighting chance helps them get into remission or even if they don't get into remission they have more quality of life they live longer gives them a better shot at living longer and of course chemo and radiation cause less and less side effects the healthier you are so i hope this diagram is useful and um, uh, i will be doing more videos on cancer to go into even more in depth into cancer. I already went a little more in depth than I wanted to there, but check out my other videos on cancer and anything that appealed to you, make sure you search it online or look at some of my other videos for that exact thing. Dive into each section, especially if you already have cancer, make sure you're treating each of those sections, research each thing and start as, as much as you can, but don't overwhelm yourself. And always, always, always work with a functional medicine practitioner that's knowledgeable in cancer. Okay, best of luck to you guys. Don't give up. Keep fighting.